comedian Devin Boyle, and I'm quitting alcohol. So I am back on the Gold Coast. It's been a long fucking day today. Sunshine Coast, the Gold Coast, it's not normally a big fucking trip. It's like two and a half hours, but fucking four hours at Australia Zoo. Fucking Steve Irwin Zoo. Crikey. It was fucking hot. It's such a weird fucking place, that zoo as well. It's like a cult (laughs) of fucking Steve Irwin. Crikey! Like, they were doing this fucking show, and they made everyone yell out, Crikey! Crikey! What the fuck? I thought I was in, like, some alternative fucking universe hell. But no, I was just in my actual life, as usual. (laughs) They split the crowd in two. It's a fucking auditorium. This fucking crocatorium. That's what they call it, the crocatorium. It's so fucking weird. Like, it's huge and it's amazing if you like that shit, but it's fucking weird. He's like the Jesus of crocodiles or something. And if you love crocodiles as well, he is your Jesus. Steve Irwin. Australians didn't even know who the fuck he was for most of his career. Anyway, they do this show, and it was so fucking packed. Must have been like 2,000 cunts in there. I don't know how big the stadium is, but it seemed like a lot of people. And there was only a certain amount of seats in the shade, and we turned up late. Or it wasn't late. It was right on time. Just as the show was starting, we turned up, and there were no seats in the shade, just directly in the fucking sun as it's over your fucking head. And... I'm not built for fucking sun like that. So we just sat in the sun and I'm thinking, how long is this show going to go? It's not going to go any longer than like 15, 20 minutes, is it? I can sit here for 15, 20 minutes, but anything after that, I'm going to get fucking heat stroke. So the show starts and it's these two like, I don't know, fucking cult leaders or something. They're like two a guy... <laughs> These tour guides at these fucking theme parks and shit and zoos, they're off their fucking head. They're running jokes, they're riffing, they're fucking doing their whole fucking bits. Just show us some animals, cunts. So they fucking get started, this guy and this girl, and they're just working the crowd hard. I'm melting, I can feel skin cancer growing on me. And these cunts are fucking getting the crowd to act out their favorite African animals. I did Izzy Ali, but no one got the joke, just me. So they're into this fucking act. They're talking to the crowd. They're fucking doing bits. They're jogging around. They're riffing to each other. This guy and girl, there was no sexual tension there at all either. It was just all fucking show. And I look at the fucking clock. It's like 15 minutes in and we haven't even seen a fucking parrot yet. There was an ibis sitting on the roof for some reason, but nothing else. And then they're fucking... (laughs) There was like a little homage to Steve Irwin, and then they're getting the crowd to yell out, Crikey! And the kids have no fucking idea who Steve Irwin is. He died like fucking 20 years ago, was it? Fucking 15 years ago. And there's like six-year-olds in the crowd, and the six-year-olds are going like, Who the fuck is Steve Irwin, and why do we give a fuck? And why isn't there, like, a fucking eagle flying around and a crocodile eating it? Who the fuck is Crikey Guy? So it's mainly just the parents who are going, like, Crikey. (laughs) I suppose there's reruns of The Crocodile Hunter, but who's watching that? You've got fucking Instagram reels now. You've got TikTok and fucking Instagram, as if Steve Irwin's fucking replays a crocodile, whatever the fuck he was called. I don't even know what his show was called. What was it? The Crocodile Hunter? He didn't even hunt shit. He just fucking ran after it with fucking his two balls hanging out of his khaki shorts. That was the whole show. It was suspense. (laughs) It was watching it, seeing if one of his balls would fucking fall out of his shorts. Anyway, the show went for like what felt like three hours because of the fucking sun. I'm heat stroking and I'm just accepting the fact that I'm just fucking, this is like 10,000 x-rays. My wife even got sunburned. That's how fucking hot it was out there. She's like, I've never been sunburned in my life. I'm like, no, I wouldn't have thought so. 
but after the show, and it was, yeah, whatever. There was some birds flying around. There was a crocodile. It was kind of cool, but I don't know. Being forced to yell out crikey left bad taste in my mouth. The fucking culty cunts. After the show, after the heat stroke, I was just cooked for the rest of it. I was like, yeah, there's a fucking python. Yeah, there's a fucking giraffe who gives a shit. I'm like, let's find some shit the kids can play on. Wear them out. So when I'm driving, I don't have to fucking listen to them. I can just drive in silence. And, oh, it just fucking took forever to fucking get home. Or back to the one-star hotel. We actually booked into a zero-star hotel. We shared... (laughs) We shared bathrooms and toilets. And even my wife was like, nah. She booked it, not me. But she went up there and she's like, nah, we can't stay here. We're a one-star family. Let's not drop to zero. It was on the top of some fucking pub that's open till 4 a.m. as well. I'm like, I I can't be fucking dealing with that. Let's stay at the one-star hotel we fucking booked on the way in. Anyway, so here I am fucking just holding on by a fucking thread. I didn't even realize it was fucking Monday. I thought it was Sunday next week. But it is Monday, and it's time for fucking this week's Ass Boil. It's... I'm not even going to do the fucking jingle. I can't be fucked. I can't be fucked with the fucking go-to-my-website shit either. I'm just going to do the Ass Boil if it's all right with you. That's probably what you've always wanted. You're like, fucking, why does he always do that shit? Anyway, here's the Ass Boil. It's by some cunt Schneider where I don't even know where the fuck he's from. I think I like doing the podcast like this better, just uh, absolutely cooked and not giving a fuck. I feel like I've been sounding a little bit too, how would you say it, commercial radio-y lately, and I don't like it. I don't like commercial radio at all. Anyway, let's get to the fucking question. So the Schneider cunt, he sent in this question. What do you think about the banks crashing in the US? Well, Schneider cunt, (laughs) you have... Come to the right place. What do I think about the banks crashing in the US? I think it was always inevitable. So there's two levers to the economy. There's on and off. Off is quantitative tightening, which is what they're doing now. It's basically just raising interest rates, which sucks liquidity, which is just money out of the system, all these fucking jargon words, it's all bullshit. Liquidity is just money. Inflation is just shit's getting more expensive. Quantitative tightening is they're just raising interest rates and they're not going to be printing money. Quantitative easing is we are cutting interest rates and we're going to print the absolute fuck out of the fucking money. So anyway, back to what I was saying. There's two things they can do. The Federal Reserve, this is. It's tighten or ease. Quantitative tightening, which I just said, is raising interest rates and stop printing money. And that's what they've been doing at the moment. So money gets sucked out of the system. What happens when the money gets sucked out of the system is everything starts seizing up. And that's what happened with the banks. Well, what exactly happened to these particular banks? One of them, I think Signature, was a little bit dodgy. It was something a little bit different. I think that just got fucking shut down because it was like a crypto fucking bank and they're targeting crypto at the moment. But the other bank, Silicon Valley Bank, they were over leveraged in T-bonds. (laughs) which is just more fucking jargon shit. It's just treasury bills. So you give money to the government, they borrow money off you, and they give you a treasury bond, and they give you a percentage, an interest rate for the money they borrow off you. Usually it's big banks or other countries that buy these. You're not going to the US government with your 20. It's big money. So over the past, like, fucking... However many years, let's say during COVID, they lowered the interest rates to under 1%. So it was like 0.85%. So these banks who had extra cash bought a shitload of these 
U.S. Treasury bills or bonds, whatever the fuck they're called, at a very low interest rate, at like 1%. Because there's really nothing else you can get. That's the most conservative investment there is because you expect the U.S. government to be able to pay back all their money all the time. So it's meant to be the safe bet. So they bought a shitload of these bonds at 1% with the expectation that the interest rates weren't going to be raised uh, for the foreseeable future. So they fucking loaded up. And then Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, he started jacking interest rates. And if he had jacked them slowly, some of these banks would have been able to fucking hedge their bets and defend their fucking T-bills. But Jerome Powell fucking jacked the interest rates so fucking fast that you could do nothing about it. So what happened once he jacked the interest rates was these treasury bonds, these safe bet fucking assets, you could now get these at the new interest rates. So you could get fucking T bonds at 5% per annum instead of the 1% per annum that the banks had got just like a year earlier. And what happened was once you could get the fucking T bonds at that high percentage, it made the ones that were bought at 1% fucking worthless. You can't sell them. So there was a run on the Silicon Valley Bank and they just didn't have enough money. And then they went to sell their fucking T bonds, treasury bonds, and they were worthless. They weren't worth the fucking paper they were printed on. So that's an example of what happens to banks when you tighten. And if they continue to tighten, or even if they just leave it where it is, the financial system, the economy will eventually seize. More banks will go under. It will be contagion. And yeah, things won't look good. The other thing the Federal Reserve can do is ease, which is print money and drop interest rates. And that just floods the economy full of money. They recapitalize all the banks. They just fucking give them money and they're just like, fucking have a party, boys. What happens then is inflation gets out of control. That's why they started fucking tightening in the first place is because of inflation. So if they print in and if they lower interest rates into these bank collapses, which they have to, to stop the banks collapsing, they have to print more money. Inflation's already out of control. That's why they're doing the fucking interest rate rises. And that's why they stopped printing. But these banks collapsing has forced them to restart the printing. That's what they did. They fucking bailed out the banks for like 300, 400 million. The only thing they can do is continue to print, which is going to send inflation to fucking God knows where. God knows fucking where. Either way, the economy and the system collapses. If they continue raising interest rates and sucking money out of the economy to get inflation under control, it collapses way quicker than if they just continue printing. If they continue printing, could last another decade. Who fucking knows? Who fucking knows? But eventually, the economy collapses either way. All banks probably except like one bank. There'll be one bank in the end. There'll be one state government controlled bank and there'll be the real bank, the bank of the people, which is Bitcoin. Had to throw it in there, baby. Buy some fucking Bitcoin, you cunts. Anyway, fucking I didn't want <laughs> I didn't want to do a long one like that, but you get me on the economy, I fucking start frothing now. Alright. Anyway, that's it for today. Fucking whatever, and I'll see you the fuck later.